So as a 3D artist, you can literally create just about anything you want. If you can think it and visualize it, you can actually create it. However, 3D artwork can take a really long time to create. Some artists even spend months making a single picture. The image in the background is Krampus, the evil version of Santa Claus that I worked on over a period of two weeks. I didn't work on it every day, so in reality, it took less than two weeks time to actually generate this image from scratch. And while one could argue there's still a lot that I could do to improve the quality of this image, I called it done because I didn't want to spend months on it. I wanted to move on to different projects. And while I only spent two weeks on it, I was pretty pleased with the response that it got. A lot of people seemed to actually really like the image, and I even got featured on the front of a popular CG website. So I wanted to take a moment and really dissect the image. I want to show not only some of the techniques I used to create this image, but I also want to highlight some tips and tricks and some things you may even call cheating to quickly create an image like this. So with that said, let's dive right in. Alright, so this image was sculpted from scratch using ZBrush. To save time, I only really concentrated on detailing the areas that the users would see. So the body, for example, which is a completely different subtool, let's put this in solo mode, there's really not a lot of detail here. I knew people wouldn't see it, it was mainly there to create form underneath the clothing. I knew that the beard was going to cover up the chest area, so there just wasn't a lot of point in spending time detailing that area. Areas such as the face and the hands got a lot more attention to detail because I knew viewers would be concentrating on them. Each hand was actually sculpted separately. I didn't put as much detail here in the wrists because I knew it would be covered up by the sleeves and I actually painted this black to achieve a shadow effect in the final image. Of course I used Dynamesh to create the initial sculpt. I then used Z-Remesher to clean up the topology, create low poly versions of the model. And then I projected the high poly details onto the low poly with several subdivision levels. After I was fairly happy with the sculpt, I exported it to Substance Painter. All right, so here's the model in Substance Painter. All of the different subtools were imported with their own texture sets. I did remove the snow globe because I wanted to recreate that in Blender using traditional 3D modeling. The texturing was pretty simple. I used a lot of standard materials to create this and then painted little details over it. I used generators to add dirt and rock to the clothing and even the skin. As you can see here, in order to fake some shadows, I painted the wrist black like I mentioned earlier. As you can see here, I used emission to create this kind of glow effect in the face and the horns. When I was finished the Substance Painter, I exported all the maps and then imported the model to Blender. All right, here's the scene in Blender. Let's take a look around. You can see the little skull guys in the background. They're actually floating. I added their fingers. It looks like they're kind of creeping up on the guy. These were all created in ZBrush, just using DynaMesh and then Z-Remeshing, creating low poly models. The stitching was just a very simple 3D model with subdivision. I just used extrusion and created what appears to be staples. The actual body just has a grayish base color because I kind of wanted to hide it. If any of it does show through, I just kind of wanted it to disappear in the robes. All right, so here's the material view. To create the hair on the robes, I actually created another 3D mesh. As you can see, this 3D mesh lines up with the edges of the cloak. All I did was take the last edge loop, duplicate it, and extrude it out, made it a little thicker, and lined it up with the edges, and then added a hair particle system over top of it. The eyes are actually two separate meshes. There's an inner eye and an outer eye. The outer eye has a glass material. The inner eye has the texture that was painted in ZBrush with some modifications for the glow. I added some emission. Let's see if I can show that. Yeah, there we go. So I hid the outer layer. And we have the emission right here with RGB curve that goes to the emission slot. Let me see if I can pull up the emission. Yeah, that's the emission texture. It's very simple. It was just a yellow with some blur 
and some little pieces in there it kind of gave the effect that there was like a fire in his eyes something like that the outer area of the eye looks like that because of the glass overlay mesh so as for the fire it's literally just a mesh as you can see here i wanted the fire to kind of curve around the the snow globe and look like it's kind of blowing in the wind off to i guess his left hand side so it's basically just taking a noise texture mixing with the color ramp we can actually adjust here and you can see it increases or decreases the amount of fire that's multiplied with a gradient texture that as you can see decides where on the model the fire is displayed so ultimately, the noise texture and the gradient texture are combined together and they're mixed with a transparent shader and an emission shader. The emission shader designates the color of the fire. As you can see here, if I move it to blue, the fire will be blue. So I had picked kind of a nice orange and the strength was set to 50, which helps kind of push this white out in the middle and it just kind of simulates, you know, the look of fire. This color ramp right here is the factor that decides how transparent the fire is. So you can see if I adjust this color ramp, the fire gets more intense or it gets weaker. I actually subtracted part of the mesh here because I wanted the house in the middle of the snow globe to show. The smoke is literally the same exact thing. I just used um, diffuse instead of emission and used a gray grayish color here, but it's literally the same thing. Just tweak the settings a little bit. And I created several of these like smoke meshes. As you can see, I'm modifying and moving it around here. That just kind of simulated the smoke effect in the picture. And then also I did the same for these sparks. It was literally, if I can find it, here it is. It was literally the fire, the same exact fire system I set up right here, uh, just a lot weaker and spread out a lot further. Another way that I cheated was these little skull guys. They were created in ZBrush. They were sculpted from scratch using DynaMesh and ZRemesh the same exact way I created Krampus himself. When you look at the picture, it kind of looks like they're creeping over, it just adds a little bit to the image. Uh, but if I rotate the camera, you can see they don't even have a body. The hands aren't connected. They're literally just fingers. So sorry if that spoils the illusion, but there literally would have been no point in me creating an entire little skeleton demon guy with full hands when you wouldn't even see them. As for the hair, there are many different hair systems. I would basically create a vertex group and weight paint. Let me show you that. I would weight paint where I wanted the hair to be. As you can see for beard sides, I weight painted right here and the red area has the most hair while it starts to kind of fade out in the greenish and bluish areas. Dark blue meant no hair would be in that area at all. Let's take a look at the actual particle. So I just used a hair particle system, 200 strands. Uh, the hair length, I, I did a lot of grooming, so that was... The setting here was just kind of a starter, and I modified that using grooming tools manually. Of course, I used hair children. I didn't use too many, only 10, 10 children per hair particle. And then really, I just played around the settings to add a bit of roughness or clumping or whatever just made it look good. I created a few different hair materials just for variation. The hair shader was very simple. I used the principled hair BSDF shader played around with the roughness settings, added a color ramp for different colors, ranging from like a dark gray to a brown to a white, and I plugged it in to the random slot on the hair info node. So when I adjust this color ramp, if I add more gray, there would be more grays than brown. So I just wanted a good mixture, basically to my liking, and it worked out pretty well. Most areas of the model have subsurface scattering, such as the face, the hands, and the, the tongue and the teeth. If you're interested in how I created the skin shader, please check out the other tutorials on my channel. There's two other videos on how I created the 
texture maps in Substance Painter and ZBrush, and then set up the shaders in Blender. To create the snow globe, I actually created it in a separate scene. So the outer layer is just a simple glass shader. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. The inner layer, I created kind of a water shader. I used glass, gave it a slight blue tint. And then here is the actual insides of the snow globe. There's uh, These are just little spheres to simulate snow. This was very basic. All of this was procedural. I then exported this model into the other scene. So I wanted the viewer to really focus on Krampus as the subject of the image, but the snow globe and the fire and the hand really kind of stole the view. Like the, When I looked at it, all I could really see was the snow globe, the fire, and his hand, and I really wasn't paying any attention to Krampus in the background, and I didn't like that. So what I did was I added a bit of depth of field to kind of blur out his hand in the snow globe. I didn't want to blur it too much because I still wanted you to kind of make out what it was, but I definitely wanted the attention to be on his face. So I added an empty there. I focused the camera on the empty and then just used an f-stop of 2.1. I tweaked that quite a bit to get the look I wanted, but overall, I was pretty happy with how it turned out. All right, so when I was done in Blender, I rendered the image out with a transparent background and loaded it into Photoshop. And I did some minor tweaks. For one, I added some additional smoke. As you can see, I'll toggle it on and off here. I just kind of copied some from the edge over here, moved it over here, used the transform tool to kind of just adjust it and move it around. You can see I'm doing it right now. That's literally all I did. Here's the background by itself with the additional smoke. I'll toggle the background on and off. So there's two pieces of the background. There's a gradient. And then there's this overlay, which was kind of a, a rocky texture that adds this crack or this cracking look in the background. So it made a slight difference. So to recap, basically how I created this image, I sculpted from scratch in ZBrush using DynaMesh very quickly, focused mostly on the areas that I knew what the camera would be focused on. I then made low poly versions of those models using ZRemesher, transferred the high poly details onto the low poly models, transferred them into Substance Painter, painted them, loaded them into Blender, added the hair and some tweaks to the materials, then finally exported the entire image with a transparent background into Photoshop where I did some final tweaks adding the background and just a little post, maybe a little color correction and some additions to the smoke. And really guys, that's about it. Like I said, it took me less than two weeks to create this. If you thought this was helpful, please like and subscribe to support this channel. If you have any questions, I reply to pretty much all comments. Go ahead, post it in the section below and I will answer to the best of my ability. Thanks guys, have a good day, bye.